Okay, hello. So I have this scene that I created here with with just this base mesh with this head, and um, this is not rigged at all. It's just a it's just a mesh, and it's just a character with a with the mouth open and ready to animate. Um, so as opposed to putting a bunch of bones in here to make the make the eyes be able to look around and make the mouth shut, I want to do all that. I want to do all that animating with shape keys because I sort of find that that's like a, a an easier. Uh, less intensive way of animating. Um, so let's just sort of jump right into that. So basically, all you have to do is you have your you have your face here. I'm gonna add a shape key. Bam! That's the basis. If you're familiar with shape keys, you you, uh, you should probably you should know this part. But basically, if you're not, all this means is hey, this is sort of like the base shape we're starting from, and we're gonna we're gonna move from there. Um, so I'm gonna add another shape key. This is gonna be the first one that is the first deformation. And this one's going to be our blank. We'll start with the blank. Bam, we're going to rename it blank. And I'm going to go into edit mode here uh, with blank. Make sure blank, blank is selected. And then I can just start moving my points around here to be the shape of the blank I want. I want it to be, it might take a little bit of adjusting to get it there. But I think once I sort of have it in the right spot, it'll look nice. Okay. I like how that looks, I think. Um, I tab out of edit mode and it's gone, but really it's just now being affected by the slider. So right here where this is value, you can just sort of go from zero to one and you can interpolate between those two shapes. So cool, we have our blink rigged up essentially. Now I will add another shape key and we'll call this mouth closed. All right, when I go into edit mode here again, same as last time, we will have mouth closed selected, and then I can just move it into position of how I want that to be. So I'll move this up a little bit. And again, make sure you fine tune your mesh. Make it make it look the way you want it to look whenever it's closed. So I'll shut that, keep this going up. Like I said, it might, might just take a couple of adjustments, but eventually you'll get it looking right, get it looking the way you want it to. I might even pull these teeth down a little bit. Yeah, might, oops. Yeah, pull the teeth down a little bit, and then I can shut the mouth even more. Cool, the mouth is closed. And then if I go from zero to one on the slider over here, on the value slider, yeah, mouth closes and opens. So. These are these are good. We could we could essentially go ahead and just keyframe these, and then you know go down the line and keyframe it that way, um, and that gets the job done. If I hit play, it'll do its thing. But I I like to take it a step further and rig these up with bones because I find that if you're animating your character already using the armature, you might as well have these controls built in directly into the armature, right? So let's go ahead and let's do that. So with our head selected. I will add an armature and I'll just add a single bone. In your case, you might have a full rig already built, um, but it's okay because you can just keep on adding to that rig and you can add more bones. So scale this one down here. And first thing we'll do is apply that scale and I'm gonna go ahead and rig parent this to the bone, just with the bone here. Okay, so if I go here into pose mode, everything is rigged up to this one bone so far. As I move this bone around, everything's gonna move. Um, but if I go into edit mode of the bones and I will add a new bone and I'll move this one up and then let me scale this down. Sure, okay, right here, this is good. I like to keep all my control bones above the head just because I find it to be easier that way. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You could parent this to that bone. I like to leave it separate. So when I go into pose mode, if I'm moving this guy around, the top one is not affected. Um, and it's easier that way to sort of access and also see what axis you're moving along. So I'm gonna select this bone here in edit mode, this top bone, and we're gonna just go through and name this. So this one is going to affect the blink. So I'll name this bone specifically blink. Bam. So when I go back into object mode, select my original mesh, 
I can grab my shape key section and where it says blink, here's where we're gonna work with adding a driver. And drivers are really not that complex, but they seem, they, they are a little daunting at first, just like everything in Blender, but you, know, you realize it's not that bad. So blink, go to the value, we right click here and we just add a driver, it's that simple. And this driver properties adds up. If you if your mouse sort of like fa falls out of it and it goes away, that's okay, just hover over again, right click and edit driver, it'll come right back. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, down here where it says object, select what is going to drive it. And that's gonna be our armature. And then specifically under armature, we'll select the bone that we wanna drive this one, which is blink. So there, it's going to, for where the blink is, on the X axis or on the X location, it will drive this value. I like to change this here to local space because otherwise if it's not in local space, if it's world space, as I move this thing around in, in the world space, it will, as you can see, let me go into render view. If the whole thing moves in the world space, it will start to blink. And that's not really what we want. Um, we, we really want that to only affect whenever we're in pose mode. So to do that, all we have to do is change this driver, remember, right click and edit the driver again, and just change it back to local space, and that will get the job done. So we can go into pose mode here, grab this bone, and now we're moving the head all around, and then we grab the blink bone, and then if we want to animate that to the right, we just move the bone this way, blink, so that's pretty far, but we can actually change these axes here in a minute, so it doesn't have to go that far. But that it's totally standalone, and you can use that in the animation section. So I'm gonna grab all the bones, hit A, Alt R to reset the rotation, Alt G to reset the position, and we're gonna go back here. We're gonna do the exact same thing, just affect the mouth closed. So if I tab into edit mode on the bones, I'll duplicate the blink and bring it up one. And now this one here, we can rename this bone to mouth closed. Bang, all right. Now we're gonna follow the same steps we did before. It's that simple. Go in here, grab our mouth closed, shape key, right click on the value and add a driver. And we can drive it again with the armature, but rather this time we'll drive it with the mouth closed section. And then X location, good, in local space. Now you'll notice this happens sometimes. There's a little glitch with Blender where it'll, it'll say it's red, that it's not working. Um, and if you grab it to move from pose mode, if you start moving this, it doesn't actually close the mouth. I don't know why this is the case, but just make sure you just save, save your file, go to file, and then revert. And then it should work then. It's a little glitch in Blender, but um, it gets the job done. So just always basically close the project and reopen it and you're good to go. So yeah, I guess one last thing we can do here to get this looking right is we can we can fix this interpolation. So over here, we can change this here. We can edit this driver. So if we wanted, so the blink's a little far. Remember if we go over here, we select this and we go to pose mode and we want to grab our blink we have to move it the whole way what seems like the, the whole way to one over here which is just a little far in my opinion um just for the size of this rig this will all also change too based on how big is the rig you're working with um so so just whatever your own whatever you'd like it to be so i want to go to like to about here i think that's that's a decent distance for the blink and then you can see up here in this region whenever i do that again you can see it says um, it says point two on the x axis. So that's all the further I want to go is point two. So to to give it the full distance. So if I go to the blank, right click here and edit this driver. Really, we just want this is the expression here that we want to work with. So it basically just means the variable is the value. So we can do anything to this because we want it to be point two. We really want to amplify this. So it, as we go to point two, it's essentially one which is five times bigger. Because if you go to point 0.2, that would be you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, up to one. So we really want to take the variable times five, and this will amplify our, our expression five times. Whenever I grab the blink and I move it to the right, put to point 0.2, that's fully blinked. 
Okay, I wanted to go into a little more detail on why the variable driver works the way it does, just because it might be a little confusing if it's the first time you're using it. So we see that expression where it says var plus 0, 0.0, and really what that what that means is that um, it's kind of like back in math class where when you had the y equals mx plus b, right? In this case, um, we have like b is here, x is here, and there's actually like a hidden m right here. Um, and that is basically just one in this case. So um, really, it's an xy graph is what we need to look at it like. So when we, when we go down here, we have to think of it in terms of this. So um, we have this xy graph, right? And y, this value is sort of this y value versus x is sort of this is how much from 0 to 1 is is the shape key being applied and this x is this side of the value over here it's this var so in this case really y just equals x and that that's would make sense because that's the first thing you give it because if variable is x right if this is 1 then that's just y equals x plus b and if b is 0 that's just essentially right here y equals x so let me erase this stuff just to okay so again in this case y just equals x right as you bring x from 0 to 1 on that scale it's going to go from 0 to 1 on the shape key which makes sense right but in this case we really only wanted to go to about 0.2 which is like right here. So you'd have like one, two, three, four, five, which is actually, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then one. So because we only want to go to here on this graph, right, that's like five times more intense. And we know from algebra that to get this graph to go from here to here, well, that's actually something like y equals 5x plus 0. So basically that means we have to multiply x by 5. This is the mathematical side behind why this works and if you put this sort of into practice you can make any interpolation you want using this graph.